Welcome to Library Trust YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful sleeve with flounce detail and crinoline attachment. It's very simple to make. This is what you will love to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this video. Thank you. Welcome back to Library Trust YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make a sleeve with flounce and crinoline okay so this plant will be carrying a crinoline and it's a very beautiful and elegant sleeve and it's simple to make so i'll be using the dull face fabric and i already had the interface to this fabric just for stability because of my crinoline so now as you can see i already have my lines ruled here so i just did this randomly i used 13 inches to rule each line so each line is 13 inches in length as you can see so this is 26 from here to here is 26 inches and then from here to here is also 26 inches and then i just made it in there so if you have a perfect uh, a small space to work with you can easily fold it here like this into two and then into four so once you fold this and you're hooking it you have your lines feasible for you like this so quickly let's continue with the tutorial so the first, I have different flash videos of the channel already, but I'll be using a new method for this so that we'll see another method I use in making my flash. The first thing for my radius, I'll be marking one one inch round from this center point here. So I'll take my tape measure and then mark one inch round like this. Okay, so I've marked the one one inch round and then carefully I'm going to make them the circle like this. I'm using a marker on my fabric because I want it to be visible. So if you are doing yours, you may want to use a pencil or a chalk. Okay. So I have that serum round now. The next thing is for you to decide decide how big you want your flans to be in terms of length. Generally, when you have shorter flans, it costs more. Okay, so like if we have a flans of maybe one inch, two inches length, is it costs it gives you a more coffee effect than having like six, seven, or eight inches. So I normally advise, but because I'm working with a crinoline, remember I'll be putting a crinoline inside this, so I have to work with my this is about two inches crinoline. So it means I cannot work with two inches, so I can work with either two and half or three inches so that by the time I turn it out, remember I'll be turning this out. By the time I turn it out, maybe with half inches, I'll have two and half inches, and then I'm still going to sew it on top with half inches. So I'll be left with two inches. So now I'll be working basically with three inches. So I'll pick one quadrant, any one you want of my four quadrants now, then on this one now remember i have like an hack here i'm just going to take like half of it so you can just measure like 0.5 from the beginning so if you measure 0.5 you have something like this i'm going to mark it and then i'll move to the second quadrant on the second quadrant i'll divide this into half i'm just going to eyeball it and then i have something like this has my half so now on the second quadrant i'll take my Flans length measurement, which in my case is three inches. So now I'm going to measure the three inches. I want to make sure that's in the middle, and then this is three inches here, and then now from there I'll start measuring my three inches round. Okay. Okay. So I'm already making my three three inches mark, but I want to join this first marking so that I won't be overwhelmed and you will easily get it so now basically remember the first thing i did was to come into this first contract and i measured half inch which is what i have here and then i went on the second quadrant and then i divided it by two and then measure my actual length which is three inches so now basically the next thing i'm doing is just to connect from this my half inch from one contract to the three inches length from the next quadrant Okay, so to do this you just need to use your free hand to highball it or if you have a curve that can just do that for you if you are somebody like me that doesn't really like to use free hand too much so you have a curve that can just manage and do this 
it's, it can't be, it doesn't have to be really perfect. So let's say I'm just using this for, and then I have something like this already. So I'm just going to continue now with, remember my 3 inches measurement starts here. I'm going to continue joining it to my 3 inches like this. As you can see, not too good. So you can just blend it a bit here, okay? So now I just thought to show us that because I don't want to make too many points so that we might get confused. So from there now, I'll continue with marking my 3 3 inches round. Okay. So now I'm continuing my 3 3 inches like this. And then I'll continue marking it from my center. Okay now. So now I start and then I continue my 3 3 inches marking like this you can see three inches three inches three inches so when i get to this quadrant that i started my measurement from i'll maintain the three inches you can see from here three inches from here three inches from here three inches once i get to this curve that i did i'll continue my three inches from not from this first curve but from the new curve that i have here now this new curve from there i'll continue my three inches and then I mark it three, 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 three inches. Continue like that, and then it will continue to this next curve, not this one now. So now I'll continue my three inches. That's how you continue your flat with the new curve that I have, three, three inches. And when I'm done with this now, I can easily join them together. So that should be more obvious. But you can see how I'm taking my my three inches now. The next three inches it will be from here. It will be from the new dots that I have here, which is my new line. Then I'll continue taking three three inches from that part, like this. I hope you understand it. It's very simple. You just need to pay attention. So my three inches will continue like that. So now the space that you're working with depends on how long you want your flans to be for this flans because i'll be having a lot of circles i will need as much as possible so i'm just trying as much as possible to get enough flans for my curves so that i'll have enough to work with you can see that i'm going on the like the third layer now now i'm taking my three inches from here not from here not from here i'm taking so that's how we are going to continue to fill up all the spaces that we have here so now I'm joining them together now you can see that our flans is coming together so you just continue making your 3 3 inches mark or whatever length that you wish to work with just continue like that till you fill up the whole space so I continued with my marking and as you can see I'm reaching like the ending where I don't have up to 3 inches again to work with so I'm just going to close my flans in you can see from here now I don't have three inches again so I'll connect it and then close the flans here so this is my flans you can see that it is beautiful and simple to make so now the next thing is for me to cut it out Okay, so remember I'll be adding crinoline to this, which means this has to have a lining in such a way so that my crinoline will be in between my main fabric and my lining. So now I just want to take this, use this opportunity to cut out both my lining and my main fabric so that it will be easy for me when I'm sewing it. So what do I do? I just pick, remember, this is the part that I, that will be my flounce. So what I just did is, I just folded it like into two. Right side facing right side on the leftover of my fabric. And thankfully, it was just accurate, exactly what I need. So now I have two parts of fabric together now. I'm just going to hold it with a pin rand so that it doesn't shake when I cut it before I now cut. So that way I'll have my lining and my main fabric cut together. Okay, now I've pinned them together. So I'm going to start to cut out my flans together with my lining. Okay, remember I break it here. Then from here, I'll 
stać podsunąć nas so what you are just doing is tracing out the lines that you already have remember the first type side that i'm cutting out they are not half to three inches so they are not my my actual fans are not acted i'm going to cut off this one first before I now start to cut my plants. So now I've got to that point where I might start now. I've cut it off. So these are the left of and these are my actual flowers. So now from here, I'll start cutting, following the spiral lines that I have to my cut to the end. You can see what I'm cutting now, her actual three, three inches, and I've already held it with the pin so that I will have my lining and my main fabric backing each other, right side to right side. So now I'm cutting out my actual flounce. And then I'll continue cutting it till I get to the head point here. Okay, so I've gotten to I'm getting to the hand point now, and then I'm just going to continue cutting it. What I'm doing. So now I've cut this, and this now is my flans. You can see how long this is because I said. I need something very long. I can see how beautiful it is and the frills that we have. You can see how coffee this is. So, like I said in the beginning, the more the shorter your flans length, the coffee your flans will be. Look. So the next thing for me now is to sew my flans and then attach it to my sleeve the way I want it to be. So basically, remember we have two fabrics one for main fabric and one for lining if you have enough interface you can also add interface to the lining part of your fabric and then now i can sew my crinoline line to it so i'll just place my crinoline line in any part of it now because, so that by the time i turn it out this crinoline line will be in between the two fabrics so now i'm going to place my crinoline line around so for your flies you can actually stop your flans here and cut it off on this straight line so that you don't have this but i just like to have this so that by the time i'm forming a rose or something with it i like how this just curves inward and gives my rose like a beautiful inner feel like this that's i'm just leaving this curved part here so now because my crinoline line will not be able to reach here because it's short you can actually start adding your crinoline line from here or you can have start adding it from here anyone you want so now i'm going to go to the machine now and on the hemline not on this upper part i will sew my crinoline line just by placing it like this do not drag it just let it follow its own course and then you start sewing it around to your flounce like this till all the flounce is covered with crinoline. line okay so i've taken it to the sewing machine like i said and then i just sew my cleaner line on it like this so by the time i turn it out my cleaner line will be in between these two so basically you can actually top stitch on your cleaner line by just folding it like this and then top stitching on it around so that it can relax well and then fold over for you but because I use an e transfer, a heat transfer for pressing, I don't really, I'm not going to be top stitching it because the heat transfer has a lot of pressure. It's just going to press everything down for me at once. But if you don't have that, if you are using maybe a simple iron, you may want to go over it by top stitching a bit on it. Once you stop stitch, it will just relax for you so it will easily fold over and not be puffing up like this. So once you top stitch on it, it will come out really nice. So now I'll take mine to the e-transfer now and then I'll give it a good press and bring it back to show us. 
okay so i've gone to iron it now you can see that it is lying really flat on both sides so i applied the pressure on it for it to lie this flat and this is a cleaner line inside it so i did the same thing for everything so now i'll be placing this on my basic sleeve pattern this is my basic sleeve i already drafted it already now it now depends on what design that you are aiming to get i have a link a, a tutorial on how to draft this basic sleeve already on the channel you want to check that out if you don't know how to draft this so now the next thing now is for us to start arranging our flans on our basic sleeve okay now to place my rose i will need to form a starting point okay so now i want the rose to just start around my bicep so the best up will be around five inches from the uppermost part of the sleeve so or six inches so if i have like around five and a half inches i can make this to be my starting point so once i have this place as my starting point i'll try to form my first rows so like i said remember i said i don't like cutting off this small space because i just like the way it just folds in so now i'm going to be wrapping it around now to form my first rows which is this so after doing this now you can decide to tag this with a needle and thread so that it will hold this in place for you now before you place it on your starting point so after placing it on your starting point you start forming a big growth around the first one like this you start forming it and you sew it as you go along so that and then you try as much as possible to make it as close together as possible so that these rough edges will not be showing but before you start doing it it's advisable for you to just take this to a surgeon so that you surge it it will be neat and then it will hold it together for you so that it will be easier to work with now to form my spiral to make it easy for me i don't just want to start working without a guide so now since i know this is my starting point and i'm forming a big growth i can easily from my starting point after placing it here i just create like a spiral flange that is close to each other so now i'm just drawing a circle a, a spiral to guide me on how i'm going to place my spirals so it depends on the amount of flange that you have to make it as close together as possible and another thing you can do is to gather or pleat your flans as you go that is if you have enough so that you even become more weighty for you so now you can see i'm i'm drafting i'm drafting like a spiral like this round so if i have enough a big flower that i really want and if it's something that is okay with me i can actually stop my flans here my rose here before i now take it to the down part like this so now that i have this the work becomes easier for me after forming my first rose and then tacking it together i'll know that easily when i get to my sewing machine the next one i'll be sewing let me bring it to, so that we can see the next one i'll be sewing i'll just be sewing it following these spirals that i made i'll just be following it like this and then i'll be sewing it as i go okay so now i want to start sewing it so i've shown you one method of tacking your rows before you start it so if you are using a tacking method for your flounce it will be easy for you to use this method to be tacking it but if you'll be sewing it with a sewing machine it may be a diff bit difficult for you to use your machine to trace it around so if you are sewing with a machine like i am doing now i need to decide whatever pattern that i want for my flounce to follow so now i have this pattern already this spiral 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 then if it gets to here, to this place i'm going to take it up and then down like this so if you have your pattern ready you just need to cut it so that you just need to draw you out your pattern so that for me now i can easily start it from here and then 
I'll just split a bit as long as I go. So now I'm starting here and then you can see that I'm just adding small small pieces to it. I'll start, I'll continue. So once I get here, I'm going to fold it over and then continue my pleat before I continue with the style. So now I'll go to the machine and do this. Then I'll bring it back so that we can see what I'm doing for us to continue. Okay, so now I've started sewing it, like I said. So I started from here and then I kept on adding pleats to it like this. And then when I got to this end line, I just turned it and then continue adding my pleats. And then I will now go over to start sewing my spiral. But I just stopped to show us. So this is it now. I can see that this edges is still rough. So now you can either fold it over like this and top stitch it so that it can cover up these edges and it will come together and stand. Or you can just take your needle and thread and then tack this together at some point so that it will just hold them let me just try to hold it with the pin to see what it will look like so once you tack it it will bring them together like this and then hide the edges and also to make the flower stand just the way you want it to stand okay so you can see what i am doing now and then so you can see you can see what this is looking like now it's standing it's folding and we are not seeing any rough edges outside again so now after this i'll go over now and then continue sewing my spiral round like this if you have enough fabric you can please like i did also but if you don't have you just be placing it like this and sew it so if you place it first it's going to be flat so you can just stop stitch on it so once you stop it on it it will make it stand like this just to give us the effect we want okay so now you can see i've started filling it and then i just thought to show us before i finish filling everything completely so i've done like three layers of flounces here yeah, now and then i'm going to continue like this till i get to the final and then i'll place my rose in between it and you can see how lovely this is turning out it's very beautiful and then this is the one that just comes down like this you can see how lovely and beautiful this is so it depends on how big you want your flounce to be so you work with whatever pattern like i said remember before i started this i drew out the pattern that i'm going for so you can go for whichever pattern that you want and then you follow it like that so i'm going to go over to the machine now to completely close this so that we can close our sleeve and see what it looks like okay now so all the roses are filled now as you can see and you can see how beautiful this is looking so you can also add interface maybe air stay so that it won't be too stiff to the sleeve part the main basic sleeve because of all this work that you are going to be doing on it so that it can strengthen it a bit and then now the next thing i'm going to do is just to take this together now and then shape the side of the sleeve so that we can see what this flounce will look like on the mannequin so the fullness of this depends on what you are aiming for and the amount of fabric you have to work with but all in all the method that we use is very very fabric is less fabric consuming it doesn't consume too much fabric so i think i used about just one yard for both the lining and the main fabric for this one i don't even think it's up to it's just the leftover fabric that i have okay so now and the flounces you should make sure that they are as close together as possible so that your rough edges will not be showing once they are close together it will conceal your rough edges for you okay so i've sewn it like this i'm going to turn it out now okay so now i've turned it out and this is our sleeve so i'll take it to the mannequin now to see what we have so this is our flounce on the mannequin you can see how lovely it is to make this flounce and it's very very cool so we just try this and let's see where you come up you can go with any pattern or design that you wish to that you do a particular design. This is it. 